to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Some of you, the way you were twisting your tongues, I was wondering what you were saying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no other. Yes, Lord. 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 You are the King. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hold on. Can you teach your neighbor the song you want me to? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. Everyone is a musician tonight. Go ahead. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no other. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Sing, I searched all over. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. 
please be seated. very powerful teaching tonight. I believe that it will bless us as we prepare for what God will be doing um, next week at the October Miracle Service. We have a lot of expectations and we know that God will visit us in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. One of my, one of my passions um, as I teach and open up the body of Christ to the principles of the kingdom. One of my passions is to bring believers to an accurate understanding of the principles of the kingdom. Because I have learned both from the word and by experience that our victory in this kingdom is highly dependent on our comprehension of the way the kingdom works. Hallelujah. So it is possible that you can be a Christian, you can be born again, you can even be filled with the Holy Spirit. But then you find yourself innocently walking against the purposes of God for your life. Hallelujah. Many times we see from scripture that this has been a possibility. That men out of ignorance can partner with the devil to walk against their own life. So as I attempt to teach um, believers on the principles of the kingdom, I like to bring us to a point where we realize, I've said this again and again, that in the kingdom, the kingdom is made up of systems. And then there are responsibilities. Hallelujah. It's not all up to God. Please listen to me tonight. And it's not all up to you. Meaning that it is a partnership. That's why we call this meeting koinonia. Intimacy and partnership. That if anything will ever be done in this kingdom. And done in your life and destiny. There is going to be a point where you and God will play mutual roles. Are you getting what I'm saying? Come, Ken. If I am God and Ken is a man, one who seeks to see the hand of God in his life. If you do not know that you have a role to play, listen please. If you do not know that you have a role to play, you may not know how to align yourself if this is what he desires right and according to the laws of god i'm supposed to give this to him as god but if he does not know that he has a responsibility to align to receive it he can stay for years and while i'm trying to give it to him because of his inability to understand what he should do to walk in the reality of this he may never have it hallelujah and so there is there is always a dimension in the kingdom where man must play his responsibility his role right and then there is God's own part and I found out that God is ever faithful the truth is that many times the problem is never from God's end the problem is either our not understanding what to do or refusing to do it even when we understand hallelujah so ignorance and disobedience Two great dangers as far as um, walking with God is concerned. Bless you. And so tonight, I want to share a thought with us very briefly and then we'll pray. I know that God wants to do great things next week. We've had miracle services again and again. And I don't just want it to become one of those miracle services again. I truly believe that if we can align ourselves and know what to do, we can partner with God to bring dramatic breakthroughs to our lives. If you believe that, say amen. amen. 
Hallelujah. First, Second Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4 and 5. I'm teaching tonight on pulling down strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. We're going to be examining the concept of strongholds and mindsets. The goal of this brief teaching tonight is to open us up to our own side of the equation. How that many of us probably may be fighting against our own destinies by not knowing that our mindsets and the strongholds that the enemy can pause over our mind can even limit God in our lives. Second Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 10 from verse 4 to 5. Hallelujah. It's projected so I'd like us to read. Let's hurry up. One to read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of... Stop. The Bible gives us an idea that these strongholds can be pulled down. It says the weapons of our warfare, they are not fleshly, they are not man-made, right? They are not carnal, but they are mighty through God and it can help us to pull down strongholds. Hallelujah. Please write. A stronghold. A stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception. A stronghold is a sustained comma, faulty pattern of thinking based on lies and deception. A sustained Based on lies and deception. Often enforced by the presence of demon spirits. Often enforced by the presence of demon spirits. Are we following tonight? Praise the Lord. Now I've always talked about this issue of mindsets and patterns. Because believers have not yet been opened to see the extent of the damage that a wrong mindset can cause to their lives and their destinies. Let me define the word mindset so that we can tie it up together before I begin to teach. I've taught it again and again but I found out that repetition is the key to persuasion. When people keep hearing a thing again and again they suddenly build trust over that thing. What is a mindset? A mindset is an ideology. A mindset is an ideology. It's a value system. A mindset is a way of thinking. And so when we talk about mindsets, we talk about ideologies. Everyone say ideologies. We talk about value systems. Say value systems. Now it is very, very important. Because when God wants to walk with a man, there are a number of challenges that he can face. And one of the greatest, in my opinion, is the subject of mindsets and strongholds. I wrote here that when demons fortify a mindset and use it as their gateway into a person's life the mindset becomes a stronghold are you getting that now i'll take it again i'm reading it because i want you to write it down when demons fortify a mindset an ideology a thinking pattern and use it as their gateway into a person's life that mindset is called a stronghold that means a stronghold is a mindset that has been crystallized by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the person consistently thinks that way. One of the things I've learned about mindsets 
is that mindsets are gates and doors in the spirit realm. Absolutely. Gates and doors that can authorize the entrance of the word of God, of God and, or, and the things of the kingdom, or authorize the operations of demons in people's lives. Please follow me very carefully because God wants to set us free. When demons fortify a mindset and they use it as their gateway into a person's life, that mindset becomes a stronghold. See, the Bible tells us not to be ignorant of the devil's devices. The word devices, there's the word stratomai. That means his strategy. The strength of Satan is not in an ability he has in himself. The strength of Satan is the advantage of spiritual knowledge that he knows. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's not like Satan is powerful as a person. His power is based on the advantage that he was the custodian of the revelations of the kingdom. And although he was thrown down, he still has that knowledge. So there are too many pathways that he can navigate in the spirit to get to a man's life. That's what becomes the strength of Satan. Are you following what I'm saying now? So Satan is very, is very smart because he, he has knowledge of different pathways to access a believer's life. And if we do not know how to shut these doors against him, our Christian experience may be barren and we may never truly fulfill destiny. Are we getting blessed? Strongholds. Mindsets. I wrote a few thoughts about mindsets and let's write them down. Mindsets are gates, I've said that, and doorways in the spirit. They permit the operation of the Holy Spirit or the, the operation of demons. Mindsets. There are gates and there are doors in the spirit realm. That means when Satan freely accesses a man's life, there is a stronghold that authorizes his operation in that person's life. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit seems to find expression in a person's life, among other things, there is also a stronghold, a mindset that permits his operation. Number two, a man's life is directly, or the quality, the quality of a man's life is directly tied to his mindset. Absolutely true. Proverbs 23 verse 7. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, he equates your life to your thought pattern, your mindset. The quality of a man's life, the quality of my life and your life, spiritually, financially, and otherwise, the quality of my life is highly dependent on my mindset. The Bible here says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh, that means that your life revolves around your ideologies. Please, are we learning something tonight? That means... God can never change your life until he does something about your mindset. Your life is the child that your mindset is birthing or has birthed. And it will continue to birth rubbish according to what is inside until there is a change. Another thing I said about mindsets is that mindsets define our limits and possibilities in life. Mindsets define our limits and our possibilities in life. Shiba Kato Labaradabos. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Mindsets define our limits. That means your limitation in life is according to your mindset and your possibilities in life are also according to your mindset. That's the reason why you can have two people, same people, but there are possibilities that one may be able to do and the other one may not be able to step in. The Bible says, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth what? That which is good. And an evil man, 
out of the evil treasure of his heart that which is evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks hallelujah we talk a lot about words and the creative power of spoken words but words don't just evolve themselves like that they are products of ideologies men speak according to their perceptions about God about life about themselves about their destinies hallelujah another thing I want you to know about mindsets is that a man's mindset can limit God in his life very serious issue as mighty as God is as great as God is a man's mindset can limit the operation of God in his life Psalm 78 verse 41 let's look at something very interesting there the psalmist was writing about the nation of Israel with Moses Psalm 78 verse 41 It's God speaking to anybody. It says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God. And they did what? They limited the Holy One. A man can limit God in his life. A man can make God look small in his life. How did they limit God? Let's go to verse 19 and 20. Verse 19 and 20 tells us how they limited God. Still the same Psalm 78. Please let's hurry up. I have a lot to talk about and then I want us to pray. There is so much that God wants to do in our lives. Let's read verse 19. Want to read. Yea, they speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? So while they were in the wilderness, they said, does God have that? Yes, I know God is mighty. But based on what I know about him, is he that mighty to make a table in the wilderness? Verse 20. Behold, he smote the rock. I've seen that one. I know he did it. And the waters gushed out. And the streams overflowed. But can he give bread also? Yes, I know that he did this. He healed cancer. But can he really heal HIV? Can he provide meat or flesh for the people? Okay, I understand the logic between water and rock. Maybe some scientific things happen and he just took advantage of science. Amazing. The Bible says they limited God. That means God wanted to do many things. He wanted to show his outstretched arm over the nation of Israel but their mindsets limited him there are many of us here in this place that if only we could align it would be amazing how far God can stretch his hand upon our lives and do wonders in and through our lives but that one limitation mindsets and over time, that ideology has become prolonged. When demons came, they saw that this mindset is the exact doorway that they need to your life. And they fortified it. You know what it means to fortify it? That means to build a fence around it. To make sure that this becomes your thinking pattern no matter what happens. Are you getting what I'm saying? When a man is suffering from a stronghold, even when you hear the word of God, you bring that word and subject it to your mindset. And the activities of these spirits make you to resist the possibility that the word of God offers. How are mindsets formed? How do we get these mindsets? Number one, culture. Culture. I think it was the school of ministry students or the final year people were talking and then we, we talked on this too. Culture. There are ideologies that we have adopted because of where we are coming from. Our cultural values. Right? And it's not every part of culture that is wrong. But there are certain aspects of culture that are occultic, they are wrong, they are demonic, 
and we you know we grew up knowing it to be the norm and we have adopted it when we gave our lives to christ we didn't divorce from it we incorporated it as part of our christian experience and so although we are born again those mindsets still remain doorways is god speaking to anyone tonight culture the influence of culture we have all kinds of tribes in Nigeria with their history. Is that true? We have people from down south, west, middle belt, north, and all of that. We have people from the extreme north. We have the Yorubas, the Igbos, south, south, Hausa people, middle belters. And all of us have all kinds of history about our culture. Is that true? And can I tell you the truth? The way you are looking at me right now many of you you love god you are born again but the devil can sing choruses in and out of your life without restraint because there is a part of culture that some of us have refused to let go there are it's amazing as young as we are there are some of us that your 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 love and affinity towards culture is very disturbing as young as you are when it comes to culture, you behave as if you are 70 years old. It must be done culturally. As young as you are, and you wonder, my goodness, what happened to this person? Hallelujah. Cultural influences. They have defined our perception about God. They have defined our perception about marriage. Is that true? They have defined our perception about ministry. There are all kinds of men of God doing ministry in Nigeria. And when you look at the ministry, you see culture following the ministry too. There are aspects of culture that will never leave because we have allowed it. And for many of us, now there are very positive aspects of culture. Morality, respect, and so on and so forth. But I'm telling you, there are, culture was designed largely to accommodate the operation of demons and spirits. Are you aware of that? And many of us are given that template. And the devil's strategy is this. He says, become a Christian. You can become a Christian. I'm not stopping you. But I want you to go together with that. Take two of them. So you can be praying in tongues while I enter and wreak havoc in your life. Hallelujah. So it is possible to find a Christian right now. The moment there is stomach pain, he just remembers that there's there's one special kind of of concoction now i'm not just talking about um your ability to discern trees that heal that one you know that there are things that you add to it so the the man of god is born again but under certain situations huh when you find out that they are not giving you the job after service you just call somebody and say is, is there nothing we can do about it what they are saying is ah Let's go to the other way. Culture. Everybody say culture. Till today, there are many, for instance, many tribes and many territories across Nigeria that part of the rights that lead to marriage are largely occultic and devilish. Are you getting me? In fact, others... They do certain direct devilish things. You know it. You know that this is invoking a spirit to come and guide you. Someone once told me about, I won't mention where the person is from, but then they told me that there is a spirit that they invoke when they are about to get married and he goes with the family. You understand? To make sure that they are protected. And this is how our forefathers, many of our, let me tell you, as you are laughing, I hope you know that every single tribe tongue nation and territory in this country has contributed our share of permitting demons because of our culture i schooled at a particular place um careful i schooled at a particular place in in plateau state and um they had masquerades praise god can you still hear me are you with me they had masquerades and it was said that one of the masquerades 
that the guy had authority to command bees. Bees. So, if you did something wrong and they go and invoke the power of those masquerades, you will just be walking on the street and all of a sudden, you will find out that untold amounts of bees will just come and invade you and, and the sting, you know that the sting is not just a normal sting of bees because it's occultic. Everybody say culture. There are some of us, for instance, before your parents release you to come to school or do anything, they tell you there is a particular right or cultural right that you must be engaging. Am I being sincere tonight? Hallelujah. And now, for some of us, or many of us, in innocence, we have opened up ourselves and allowed these things to shape our mindsets. I know many cultures where when they give birth to children, they take the children to all kinds of places and they have some, some kind of fraternity with demonic spirits to protect and, and, and guide the children. And the demons will seemingly protect the children. But then it is at the expense of the destiny of that child. Everyone say culture. Number two, mindsets are formed as a result of past experiences. You can put on your phone to just help you as you write. Past experiences, whether good or bad, your experiences in life, it has a way of um, creating a mindset in you. I'll give you an instance. A lady who was probably abused growing up. Hallelujah. Maybe molested by a pastor or her relative or somebody. May grow up having a mindset that all men are devils. All men are destructive whether they are born again or not. In fact, there are still some of you sitting down right now. Probably... You had three or four or five or more relationships. And maybe most of those relationships are with believers. But then at the end of it, you've had one disappointment or the other. And on the strength of those experiences, you have been able to draw what you call a logical conclusion. That all men are wicked. It's just that some are more wicked than others. All are wicked. You see that? So, when God wants to do great things in your life, something comes to limit you. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Everyone say, help me, Lord. Number three. Your mindset is formed by your level of exposure. Level of exposure. Thank you. I think I'm good. I'm okay. Your level of exposure. That means, now not to insult you, but if you grew up in the village, entirely in the village, you've not had any kind of uh, exposure, you grew up in the village, there are certain possibilities that exist in the village. Right? And you may not know that life can be lived at a higher level. Is that true? So you may be old, but the truth is that there is an ideology that you take along. Your level of exposure. There are people, for instance, who growing up, they never serve them food in their own plate. You know this kind of communal... These families with many children, especially polygamous families, they now say food is ready. Food is ready means secure your spot. Just find somewhere and sit down. Because whatever is a big, big plate, and wherever you can, if you, if you are strategic enough, good for you for that night. If you are late, bad for you for that night. I follow me now. So, when those kinds of people are growing, it affects their concept of kindness. <laughs> it affects their concept of generosity. Are you getting me? 
When you see someone carry a hamper, a Christmas hamper to bless somebody, say, ah, this is too much. Ha! Ah. I mean, how can you lavish everything just on one person? Because all through growing up, you shared everything plus your clothes. There was nothing you ever had that you were blessed with and you said, this is my own. Mindset. Hallelujah. There are families, for instance, where father, mother, children all slept in the same room. Correct? Once it's night, everybody secures a very strategic area. Those who put two chairs together, those who put mats outside, huh? those who squeeze and do all kinds of things, mindsets. And so it affects you. Now, while you're laughing, I hope that you are, you are seeing how that mindsets are formed. Your level of exposure. And now, the danger is that if you, you are bankrupt in terms of exposure, if you are not careful, when God now begins to expose you, huh, you will push yourself into some unnecessary exposure that will be swinging to the other side of the pendulum. Have you seen people like that? People who you never... You never would have been able to afford a shoe of 1,000. Now you are in a relationship with somebody and he bought you a shoe of 20,000 and said, no, my standard is more than this. You see the other side of the mindset. All your life you use shoe of 1,5, highest. Now you have a shoe of 20. You say, no, 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 no. I suffered growing up. I must make up for this thing. Mindsets. Is God speaking to us? Number four, your association. Mindsets are formed um, based on your association. If you've lived your entire life having wicked people, heartless people, bad brothers who bullied you, beat you up, you went to school, you had seniors who beat you up, bullied you, it creates a sense of complex and inferiority and many things happen to you. Associations. There are many people who became Christians easily because while they were growing up, they were surrounded by genuine people. Look at our little baby now, um, Faith. Our little baby in Koinonia. Imagine how this lady will begin to think I was having a fixed class with the school of ministry students. And then while we were praying, praise God, while we were praying, I watched the little girl. She was praying in tongues and just moving. When they lift their hands, she would lift her hands. Mindset because of our association. That lady at age five or six will think like somebody at age eight because she has been relating with adults. That's how some of you, you are 17, but your mind is, is 41. Because all through, you never had a mate. All your mates, you did have mates. Your, the, your friends were ten times older than you. So you joke their joke at their level. So now that you are with your friends, when you talk, they say, ah, bros, how old are you? Mine's, have you seen people like that? Even the way they walk. You see the person walking and you're like, my brother, it's all well. You say, I'm like that, oh, please. Mindsets. There are people, when they crack jokes, they crack ancient proverbs. They can't crack anything, anything modern and contemporary. Where other people are saying, you know, if wishes were horses, the guy would just come with one kind of thing. Say, when a, this and that happens, and you are looking at it and say, my brother... The last time I read this was in one tribal dictionary. Where did you get it? That's all he's known all his life. Everyone say mindset. Your association. You grew up with your grandfather. You grew up with your grandmother. Their possibilities were your possibilities. Their jokes were your joke. You ate what they ate. Now they ask you what's your best food. You mention something nobody knows. Because all through, that, that's what you have been exposed to. Now, follow me, please. God is taking us somewhere this night. Number five, your family background. Sadly, if you grew up from a poor family, there is something it must have done to you. 
must have done to you, no matter how godly or otherwise you are. If you grew up from a very wealthy family, if you grew up from a Christian family, there are some of us that grew up in polygamous families that are mixed. Is that true? Some were believers, some were non-believers. There are some of us that grew up in all kinds of family settings. And these things have created an impression in us. For instance, if you grew up in a polygamous family, based on what you saw growing up, you knew that your mother's side and your stepmother's side, everybody protected their own interests. Is that true? Now you come to ABU and your friends are saying, let's feel free. Say, no, I don't feel free. I, I protect and I guard my thing. And they're saying, no, we are innocent people. They fetch water for you, you refuse to use it to bath. And they say, uh uh, we are all koinonia. They say, koinonia, wickedness is real. You see, a mindset. You came back and you saw that your roommate fetched your food. You say, God forbid, I will eat again. Because that's what happened probably between your stepmom and your mom. So you just felt that, uh uh, the moment you are sick, you are suspecting all your roommates. Who is doing this? Somebody in this room, a man's enemies are the people. In your mind, you are talking about your own house. Mindset. To an extent that even when you say God has blessed you with something and they say we rejoice with you, you get angry. Because you are used to it. When they said they rejoice with your mother, that thing scattered. So now they say they rejoice with you. You say you rejoice. I'm saying I'm marrying. I'm getting married. And you say you are rejoicing with me. See, mindsets. We have had unnecessary enemies because of our mindsets. Family background can influence mindsets. Let's look at one more. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your failure and your limitations in life can build a mindset in you. Failure and limitations in life. You probably wrote jam 10 times before you got admission. Praise God. Or some kinds of things. Maybe you had to write Wayek many times. Or when you were in primary school, you had to repeat. Or secondary school. All these things are mind builders. They create mindsets in us. Now, the danger is this. Please look up. The danger is this. That mindset creates your picture about what you perceive life to be. Are you getting me? The mindsets that you have, they are like, they are like paint brushes. So, they can paint to you a picture of what the world looks like. A picture of what friendship looks like. In fact, a picture of what God looks like. You probably trusted God for something. Trusted God as a family. Nothing happened. And the worst of all happened. And then another one happened. Maybe a tragic event. And then another one happened. And then another one happened. Have you seen parents that when you say, God is faithful, they just say, God? What are you talking about? God? Which God? Where was God when they were driving me out of my house? Where was God when maybe my wife or husband was dying? Have you heard people like that? Where was God when my child was dying of cancer? So because of their failures and their limitations, it has created a mindset about God. So when you sing all these songs about the faithfulness of God, and you read scriptures like, since I was um, young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. That man will say the psalmist lied. Because there is nothing in his life to verify that that is true. Hallelujah. And so you now compose a song with that scripture. And the person calls you a liar. Because he says, God, there, there are people today that believe in anything that works. Whether it's God, an idol, because they believe that, look, oh, if you depend on God alone, you will fail. So add whatever works. And that was the whole concept of the Egyptian, Egyptian religion. They had many gods because they believed that gods were limited. So one had a unique grace for, for fertility. Another one had grace for um, 
um, protection. Another one had grace for wisdom and oratory. So they believe that when you serve all of those gods, you will have the complete picture of a good life. Now look at me. Did you realize that your understanding about life today, your understanding about God, and your level of impact and breakthrough in life has largely been limited by your mindset. And for some of us, it's no longer a mindset. It has become a stronghold. Why has it become a stronghold? Because demons saw that mindset and they saw that this is the exact kind of mindset that permits their operation in an area of your life. So they came and fortified that mindset to make sure that you do not even realize there is a problem with it. Hallelujah. So every time God wants to do great things in your life, those strongholds limit him. God wants to make you prosperous. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to heal and bless you. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to take you from glory to glory. Those strongholds limit him. God wants to give you a good husband, a good wife, a good job. God wants you to excel and break limits. But those mindsets limit him. There are many people who may never enjoy a good home. Because there are poisonous strongholds that they have about, about fatherhood, motherhood, parenting, and so on and so forth. There are some of us right now, we don't have any friend in our lives. The truth is there are no friends. All the friends that we have are just our regular church people who just, just because of our connection. But we don't have destiny friends. And the reason is our mindset. There are some of us, you fight with everybody you come across with. Once you are friends with the person, after two weeks, you are already fighting. Something about your mindset keeps telling you that everybody hates you. Hallelujah. There are some of us who have settled down and we have believed that we will never amount to anything in life. Why? Because family background, culture, everyone in your family was a failure. The richest man in your family was a carpenter. And he probably had a bike. That's it. So it's a mindset. Out of the 20 or 30 people in your extended family, nobody has risen past secondary school. A mindset. And you have accepted it. So even when you push through to, to get a degree, you say, even if I don't get a job, I've tried. After all, I'm better than these ones that stop there. Whereas God wants to take you to the nations. Everyone shout, change my mindset, oh Lord. Shout it one more time. Change my mindset, oh Lord. Let me tell you something. One of the greatest deliverance that can happen to a man is not just that demons are casted out, but that that there is a change, a reconfiguration of your mindset such that you authorize heaven to now begin to carry out only the things that are consistent with the word of God in your, in your life. I look at people, I've had the privilege of traveling to many places in this country. And when I travel, I like studying the culture and the ideology of the people. And oftentimes when we travel, if we are spending more than a day or two, they usually take us on a tour around the major areas of the city. They show us different things and all of that. And I have been amazed. I have been shocked and sometimes surprised at the ideologies that can be across a territory. Let me give you one. Um, in 2007, when I was in Port Harcourt, when I got there for the first two or three weeks, I was laughing every day. And the reason was because 
I have never seen that a man can be angry and slap your car. Are you getting that now? I mean, you push somebody and he's angry and then he slaps your car. Boom! The metal. Oh. And to him, he believes that that slap is supposed to have gotten to you. I said, my goodness. You slap a metal, your hand is paining you, the person in front does not realize and is supposed to be a communication of your pain. Same mindset. Number two, Lagos. I have always wondered how a man will rush and hurry his life like that. I mean, you hurry your life, almost enjoying yourself. You are trying to drop, trying to climb. And in the midst of the car, there's someone preaching. Praise the Lord. Oh, single, single. And somebody's dropping. And they're hurrying up. And I'm wondering, my goodness, a combination of spirituality and foolishness coexisting? Mindsets. Hallelujah. I went to a particular region in this country and I found out that it was the women that were on bike. As in bike, as in bike machine. My goodness. Yes, the ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies on bike. And I said, where are the men? How can a man buy bike and give his wife and say, you know, go and farm or do whatever with it. Mindsets. Could it be that there are certain things that God has wanted to achieve in your life this year, 2014, but up till now, your mindset has refused to give him entrance? Can I tell you something? Before we blame Satan over everything, I am telling you now, that Satan is not so powerful. The strength of Satan is the ability to build strongholds around your mindset. Is God blessing us? That's why you find out that there are people. Have you seen people you pray over their situation and nothing happens? Because the truth is their mindset opposes that prayer. The Bible says that we can pull down these strongholds. We can pull down these strongholds. There are many people who demons have been casted out of them. Yet, their situations did not change. See that? It's not all about demons. There are strongholds that are resident within our minds. And tonight, God will grant us grace to deal with it. How do you pull down these strongholds? Let's look at it quickly. How do you pull down these strongholds? Seeing that they are destructive. Man of God, could it be that there is more God can do with your life and ministry? But your mindset, your mindset. I was teaching the school of ministry and I told them, the ministry students, I told them, I said, think world class. Think world class. You can start from Jerusalem, but don't die in Jerusalem. Jesus, listen, listen. They said this about Jesus. Nathaniel said in John chapter 1, he said, can anything good come out of where? Let me, t let me talk to you a bit before we talk about how to pull down strongholds. Let me tell you how familiar spirits operate. You know, have you heard about familiar spirits? Do you know how they operate? Let me tell you. A familiar spirit, right, is, is a spirit or there are groups of spirits that have dwelt across a region for a very long time. They have studied the vulnerabilities of the people and built strongholds from their vulnerability. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have, they have over hundreds and probably thousands of years dwelt in a region that's why they are called familiar 
they understand everything about the lineage they understand everything about that territory and they have been able to study patterns and they have found the best pattern that they can create a door out of that's the reason why you find out that many territories have certain limitations is that true there are tribes that their own their own um unbecoming is immorality is that true there are tribes that their own is hatred there are tribes that their own is anger there are tribes that the men are careless is that true generally careless born again or not born again the men are just careless there are tribes and territories where in almost any every family you must find one or two daughters that um may have a child before marriage is that true there are other families that you out of 10 people you may find only one that can sustain their marriage familiar spirits they build strongholds across the vulnerabilities of territories and they use it as their entrance so the man of god may be in ministry but he has not dealt with these areas and he thinks it does not matter and he finds out that although he's in ministry that anger that surrounded his territory is still affecting him in ministry and there are many doors god will send partner to the ministries he will drive them out because of anger are you seeing that now how do you pull down these strongholds number one you must first recognize and admit the need to take on a renewed godly mindset you will never never receive the help of god if you do not recognize and admit that you need help there are many arrogant people with messed up mindsets who will never accept that something is wrong with their ideologies the first step to your deliverance hear me brothers and sisters is not that hands are laid on you is that you come to a point where you think about your life and look at me in the next one minute i like everybody under the sound of my voice think about your life is this the best if you don't come to a point where you think about your life you may die in that level forever think about your life why am i behaving the way i always behave why have i attracted all kinds of woes into my life is this the best of my destiny why is it that every man that comes into my life in two weeks he will go away leave the issue of demons they gave you a job after two weeks you fought with your superiors they drove you you went to another place after two weeks you fought with your superiors the third one the day they gave you the job you slapped your boss they said this way out never come back again something is wrong some of us our mindsets have driven all our destiny help us all there are some of us our mindset about money has kept us poor and will keep us poor forever God will bless you with 10,000 naira. You carry all of that 10,000 naira. No tithing, no giving. You carry it and go and eat in a restaurant. You call your friends. Let's come and enjoy ourselves. Mindset. Because you think your respect and honor is based on the money you have. And that's what you got probably from culture. Are you getting my point now? So you think that you will be well respected and you go out of your way, make money only to carry it and spend it. Your concept of making money is to have something to spend because the more you spend, the more you are respected. Mindset. So you see a man who is working and earning 250,000, but you will go to the village for Christmas or New Year at the end of the year and blow 3 million naira trying to impress people and come back broke and sell one of his car only to begin the hard work again after 40 years of working he has not been able to do anything and live for his children everybody say mindset there are some of us we have mindsets and we believe through those mindsets that we can never do anything on our own and that's the basis for your doing malpractice you are born again you are every even this exam now some of you it has started some of you to start there is a 
a predetermination already my practice i must do it it's just that it will not be as great as the last one at least i'll be here but i must do it for some of you i will look for chokes but if they bring it i will refuse mindsets have you not heard of parents organizing waek huh? waek and jam and flogging their children for not receiving the chokes mindsets because they think that no matter what will happen, let the child just move forward. Their ego is at stake. And they don't care whether the child is understanding or he's moving legitimately or not. When we come into the kingdom, one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit is begin to expose us to a point where we realize that the mindsets we have at the moment is not sufficient. To take us to the place where God wants to take us. How many of you can admit tonight. That I, I want to take responsibility. Some of you. You have been blaming everybody. From your father to your mother. You are blaming everybody. You are now blaming your friend. You are now blaming everybody. You will take that bad attitude. And blame your husband and your wife. When children come. It will now be children. How many of us tonight can say, I take responsibility. My mindset needs upgrading. There's no denying it. See, let me tell you, when you come before God, you must be like a child. You must allow yourself. It's not your fault. Some of us, that's the reality you lived with all your life. Now God is challenging you. There are two groups of people in this place tonight. Those who will argue it and throw away what I'm saying. And allow the devil to keep fortifying that mindset. And after 20, 30, 40 years, you'll find out that nothing has moved. I found out that time does not change things. New decisions bring new changes in life. For 38 years, a man was lying down at a pool called Bethesda. But in less than 5 minutes, when he did something differently from a renewed mindset. You know his problem? Anger and bitterness. Jesus said, what will I do for you? He said, no, every time I want to do this, all these people, and Jesus said, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. You have refused to move forward because you think your friend married the man who will be your husband. Ten years, they've given birth to five children. You are still there angry. They cannot even remember the events that happened. Say, in this life, there are some people, even in heaven, blah, 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 keep talking. They are moving. You are there dying. The devil has crystallized a mindset of hatred. There are some of us that hate our parents. It's true that they treated you bad. But you know that you must honor your parents for your days to be long. And now God is telling you let go. So that you can take on something new. Me, God forbid. Mindsets. God wants to take us to new levels. Brothers and sisters, there is no telling how far God is going to take you. Look at Joseph. Joseph had a dream, a great dream, to be a great man in life and destiny. He shared the dream with his brothers and he paid dearly for it. After many years, he now became the prime minister in Egypt and his brothers came. He would have been angry to hold on to that resentment. The Bible says a merry heart doeth good like medicine. But a broken spirit who can bear. There are some of us right now. God is speaking to you. There is a lot of forgiveness for you to do. If you must rise up. You are angry with everybody. Now you, are, you have joined the group. You, you are now angry with yourself. Everybody you are angry with has moved forward. Only you. Now you are angry with yourself for being angry with everybody. I, I don't even like life. Let me even die. You see, that's the point. But tonight you are hearing the word of the Lord. It's time to lay that mindset down. Some of us, you've been carrying your village on your head. And it has been punishing you for decades. It's now time to drop that thing and say it's true. I am from so, so, so place, but I'm an ambassador of the kingdom. I need to change. Many of us have mindsets about money, mindsets about marriage, mindsets about God, mindsets about everything. 
Some of us, because of our mindsets, you don't apologize. Because your mindset interprets apology as being cheap. So when you need to say, I'm sorry, you say, over my dead body. I'm sorry would have saved many people. Money, time, opportunities have been lost. Say, the way I am, I don't tell anybody I'm sorry. I don't look for anybody's thing. I don't care. And God is saying, apologize. Say, for what? Mindset. Who knows? Maybe there are still some people here. You come for koinonia, but you don't talk to one another. I can't apologize. There are some of us, mindsets have brought self-centeredness. Let everyone go to hell for as long as I'm doing well. It must benefit me first. When I'm satisfied, I now turn and I say, who is there? I had to change a lot of things. Oh my goodness. I had terrible mindsets. When I started working with God, I had gotten some of these mindsets from my upbringing. I got these mindsets from my failures of the past. I got these mindsets, but I knew that where God was taking me to. See, you cannot give God your terms for greatness. You must subscribe to his terms. Many of us want to be great, but you want to be great at your terms. You say, Lord, these are my conditions. If you can bend to my little mold, that's your cup of tea. And God says, I am God. Do you know that something that has never been done in your family, you can be the first? But the question is, are you like the nation of Israel that has limited God? Sister, who told you God cannot use women? Who told you there cannot be women billionaires in your family? Everyone has suffered. You are planning to go and join them. I know one of our ladies in this place. They have a mindset in their family. She comes from a background where if you go to secondary school, just from a little, they just drag you and say, go and marry. You know there are backgrounds like that. They say you have tried. JS3 or SS1, that's good enough. Go and marry. And I know the lady and I've, I've honored her resilience. This lady has gone through all kinds of pressure from family that she should go and marry. And the lady said, I want to go to the university. There's much that God wants to do. They made arrangement of one man for her. And they were trying to cajole her to go home so that he would pin her down. They would marry and she refused. Let me tell you, breaking out of a mindset is difficult. You will be misunderstood because you are breaking status quo some of you when you want to do something your parents say every end of the year there is something we bow to and you say daddy i love you and i respect everyone but i'm tired i'm now a child of god your father will say how old do you think you are i bow to this thing to pay your school fees why didn't you reject the school fees i bow to this thing to buy the bible that you are using you better go and bow But who tonight will be able to say, Lord, I recognize a need for a change of mindset. Oh, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. If you break that barrier between you and your destiny, you will fly on the wings of eagles. I don't care how bad things are right now. It doesn't take time. It only takes you cooperating with the Lord. Say, Lord, in my village, nobody has done this. In my family, nobody has done this. But right now, I make up my mind to partner with the Holy Spirit. You may be one in a million, but you must be the first to stand up and arise and say, I'm going to break this status quo. This status quo of witchcraft. Everybody in your family has died at 30. You will need to change your mindset and say, no way. No way. My father's elder brother died at a particular age. My father's younger brother died at a particular age. When he was getting to that point, thank God that we had had some spiritual knowledge and we prayed and we labored in the spirit. My father would have died in a miserable way.
how to pull down strongholds number one you must recognize and admit that you need a renewed godly mindset you must every man that saw the mercy of God in his life had to come to a place where he broke down and humbled himself God does not help arrogant people if there is one thing that God does is to oppose the crowd there are many of us probably for the first time in your life today will be your the first time your pride will be broken to say Lord finally finally I get down on my knees and I accept that my wrong mindset is the reason why I'm poor and broke my wrong mindset may be the reason why I am not married my wrong mindset is the reason why my ministry may not be growing my wrong mindset may be the reason see if you break down let it sting your ego and let it go and let God step into your life you will never I'm telling you this you will never get the attention of God with the arrogant nature that many of us have God if you are available please come down I think uh, I may need you one or two areas God is not like that if my people who are called by my name the first thing that happens is they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and then turn repent turn from their wicked ways he said then not before not during then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their lives the hand of the Lord is not too short over our destinies many of us need to get to that point of humility tonight I know you are a great evangelist bishop pastor but tonight break down your pride and say Lord I ask for mercy there is something up here that is permitting the devil to wreck my life. I had to come to a point in my life where I said, Lord, don't let me be a fool forever. Search my heart. Try my thoughts. All the mindsets that authorize demonic activities in my life, take it away. I'm willing to pay whatever price. Who is ready to make that decision tonight? Oh, that's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. That's where it starts from. Nothing will ever change in your life. Nothing will ever change in your destiny. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming your father. Some of us are angry at where we are coming from. I wish I didn't come well you are from there now so you can as well calm down you're already hoping that you will soon change your indigent certificate that's not the issue indigent certificate will not change your destiny when your mindset changes some of us have disowned our parents because they represent pictures of such failure you don't want to be associated the day you look at your you have been telling everybody that your father is your uncle it's time to tell the truth some of us have lied that our parents are abroad they are not abroad it's time to tell the truth that man is my father he may not have done well but i will rise what he could not eat i will give him where he could not go All this life of falsehood and lies and a fake impression of success will destroy us. We have to come to a point where we admit that there is something about our mindset. For some of us, it has become strongholds. You betray everybody that comes close to you. It's an attitude. It has never been an issue. You're a loving person. You love God, but you betray. You are not trustworthy at all. Any information they tell you is the same thing as telling a radio station. It's just like they took it to FM and said, let just tell the whole. And you are very happy. You are a pretty lady, but that's your own becoming. Every guy that comes after two weeks, he just 
does as if he's going to come back and disappears. Because every time they see that thing, the Bible says Naaman was the captain of the army of Syria. Second Kings 5. He said, but we must deal with the bots in our lives tonight. And if you are unwilling to take responsibility, let me guarantee you, you will never see the hand of God. Number one, Lord, I recognize, I admit that the quality of my life today is dependent on my decisions, which have been products of my mindset. I may not have seen things accurately, but right now I ask you to help me. Number two. Number two, how to pull down strongholds. After admitting this, number two is casting out the demons that keep the faulty mindset. You must cast out those spirits that keep those mindsets. Because when a mindset has become a stronghold, a demon spirit is involved. You will never enter a man's house and spoil the goods until you bind the strong man. And casting out demons there involves number one, destroying their legal hold over your life. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Please listen to me. All these demon spirits and these principalities that leech over our destinies, they do it on legal basis. And the Bible says, and they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimonies. That's where we talk of covenants and curses and yokes that cast spells over people's minds. Control their mindsets. You must cast those demons. You must cast those devils. And if you think there is no spirit to cast out, you are joking. You are joking big time. There are wicked spirits that leech and become strongholds. So every time God wants to step into your life, they build fortifications. They have kept families poor. They have kept many people downcast. You must break their legal hold. It's not enough to cast out devils. That which gives them a legitimate ground on your life must be dealt with. And the blood is the mystery that solves that. Because the blood is a price in the spirit. The highest price. The price that can open any door. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Are we getting blessed tonight? We're getting into the heart of the matter now. Please let me have your attention. Let my life be the temple of your spirit. Let my spirit feel the warmth of your embrace. Let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell. Oh Lord, I want to know your glory. I want offer a sacrifice of praise so fill this temple Lord with your spirit once again the Bible says in whom the God of this world are you seeing that there are spirits involved? Blinded their minds. He did something. It's an enchantment over your mind. It's a spell that controls your mind. No matter what you are told. And that's what authorizes demons. 
you sleep in the night and there are all kinds of spirits coming to molest you you go on prayer and fasting and in the middle of the prayer and fasting is still happening there is a legal hold it's not just in jesus name go i'm telling you listen to me oh yes Whenever something good is about coming into your life, a man or a woman or a snake or a serpent or something, these are mysteries in the spirit. Demons don't find pleasure in anything. They, it's, 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 a, it's a mystery, it's a code in the spirit that activates the operation of failure. Some of you, is during exam, certain strange things happen to you. Enchantments mindsets that have been blinded by demonic activities and you want to rise every time you want to rise all they need to do is touch those codes and it brings you back you want to stop the clubbing you want to stop all of those things the day you make that determination a strange mystery happens in your life and it reduces you back you are in a dirty relationship that is ungodly you pray and you make a vow and say, I'm going to send a text to this brother and say, enough is enough. I'm ready to move forward. And these mysteries are activated again. And you who said you will stop, you will now call him and carry your two legs and go to his house. It's not normal. But mindset. He said, in whom the God. And to make matters worse, you truly have a stronghold when they are talking to you and you do not even see the need for change. Have you seen people like that? That's the classic example. There are people that can be sitting. You are talking to them and to you it's supposed to be very clear that this rubbish they are doing is not taking them anywhere. And they look at you. When you finish, they just laugh. There are people like that. They will escort you for koinonia and come and leave you here. They'll say to bros, tomorrow now, it will be. And they turn back and you are wondering and powerful worship is going on in whom the God of this world, the God of this system has what? Blinded their minds. It's like a, it's not just blinded like, um, it's a spell. That's why some of our parents can be doing the things they are doing. Mindset. God will bless them. They will carry the money and be giving the children of rich people and you are dying in your house not even a rapper for your mother they've not paid your school fees and when you talk to them they don't even see the need to change they say i know what i'm doing the god of this world has blinded their minds you must cast out the demons that fortify these mindsets and make them strongholds number three when that happens, then you engage in what the Bible calls the renewal of the mind. The renewal of the mind is useless until there is first an admittance until the spirits that are responsible for holding this mindset are casted out. Then you are now released. Now look up please. This is the problem with many deliverance ministries in Nigeria. Listen to me. You think God is calling you into the deliverance ministry? Just listen to me before you add to this confusion that we have in this country. Many people fulfill the first condition. Yes, I think something is wrong. Something is moving in my body. Huh? Or I have repeated cycle of failure. Now you go to a man of God. Step one. Step two, you believe the demons are casted out. But number three, there is no renewal. And the Bible tells us the mystery of demonic operations. When a spirit leaves a man, huh, it goes through arid regions, dry places, seeking for a place of habitation and not finding any. This is what the demon will tell the man. He said, I will arise and go back to my house. He's still calling the man his house. And then he returns back and the Bible says he finds the place swept, clean, but empty. Swept, clean, but empty. And when the demon sees that is still the old mindset that is there, he now gathers seven other demons 
greater than itself and says, let's build a fortification. And you find out that the man's latter state is even worse. That's why you can see that a man can be delivered. Two months, he may get some level of breakthrough. And after three or four months, he gets back not even square one, square zero. And then we keep blaming a lot of men of God and saying, that, that means that my man, my man is not genuine. That deliverance is not true. We have a responsibility. The renewing of your mind. What does it mean to renew your mind? It means to passionately pursue. To know God's perspective about life. To renew your mind means to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed by the word of God. I take it again. The renewal of the mind means to passionately seek to know God's perspective about life. That's what I call wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to know God's perspective about everything. And then to seek to understand the principles of the kingdom as revealed in the word of God. Romans chapter 2 verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world. The Greek word is aeon. The thinking pattern, the mindset that comes with this system. There is an ideology that comes with this system. It said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. You're not there yet? By the renewing of your mind. He said that ye may prove that which is um, good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. So how do you get transformed? By the renewing of your mind. That means there are things I've been doing that is probably keeping me poor. I've not been tithing. I've not been giving. I walk in a life of selfishness and materialism and self-centeredness. All of a sudden, those spirits and demons of poverty have leached through that mindset and created a stronghold out of it. Now I come and I make up my mind to want to enjoy the blessings of the Lord. And when I'm delivered from the operation of those demons, then I now begin to adopt heaven's ideology. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? And so on and so forth. And then, the moment there is that renewal, Satan comes and he cannot find his doorway to your life again. At that point, your liberty becomes permanent. Deliverance is never complete until it is backed up by a process of transformation. That's why people, people who get delivered and are not channeled to sit under a heavy teaching anointing where the principles of the kingdom are taught will go back, I guarantee you. Back into what they were delivered from. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. It says, let this mind be in you. Let this mindset, permit this mindset to be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. When Jesus walked the earth, he had a mindset. There was a mindset that made the waves and the, and the seas obey him. There was a mindset that made the Holy Spirit comfortable living in him. There was a mindset that made his enemies not to be able to resist nor can say his words. There was a mindset that helped, that made him to fulfill his assignment. And the Bible says, let this mind permit it to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And the instrument to get that, that mindset into you is the word of God. The word of God accurately taught and accurately explained. Number four, how to pull down strongholds. Number four, you need to take steps and make 
new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. You need to now take steps and start making new decisions that are consistent with this renewed godly mindset. Your life became a disaster because you were taking steps based on a mindset that was ungodly. Now that you have paid the price to adopt a new mindset, start taking steps based on that new mindset and you find out that your life will start changing. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8. It says, finally brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, hallelujah, it begins to list certain things and it tells you think on these things let your mindset say finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things allow these things to frame your mindset so that your decision will now become true, honest, just, pure decisions. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 2. We looked at that but let's look at it again. I announced to somebody tonight that the devil is a liar over your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. Please read together. I want to read. The apostle is speaking. He said, fulfill my joy that ye be like-minded. There is a mindset that I propose to you. This is my admonishment. Please be like-minded. Don't have a different mindset. There is a, a mindset that made the Holy Spirit work mightily in me. He said, be like-minded. Be like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Brothers and sisters, your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset. Your destiny is at the mercy of your mindset. The quality of your home is at the mercy of your mindset. The excellency of your spiritual life is at the mercy of your mindset. The quality of your finance or your level of finance is at the mercy of your mindset. Your level of greatness in life, among other factors, is at the mercy of your mindset. He leads me and guides me to the city of He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city up above he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny listen god wants to take you far but are you ready to hold on to his hands tonight and say lord if it means me dropping certain devilish aspects of culture, it drops tonight. If it means me dropping certain aspects of my past, it will drop tonight. Listen, let me tell you something about your past. If your past does not inspire you, dump it. Dump it. Dump it. There is no reason to meditate and think about a past. I don't care what you have done. If your past does not inspire you, pack it up this night and throw it out of your life. Oh, holy God. I know 
you will not fail oh holy god oh holy god i know you will not fail listen as far as god is concerned you can count on him god is the God is reliable. His part of the equation is guaranteed. But the question is, are you ready to hold on to his hand? There are many of you that need to leave the hands of culture tonight. There are many of us that need to leave the hands of family backgrounds and association. Listen to me. Love is a command. Association is not. If you need to pack up from some devilish associations, that will not take you to the place of destiny. I don't care how long they have been your friends. Separate from them. Abraham had to leave the servants. Because he was going to climb a mountain. Do you realize that there is a place in destiny? God is dependable. God is reliable. Are you not tired of that habit? You have prayed and prayed and prayed. It's not just the issue of prayer. It's the issue of alignment. Alignment. Your anger has destroyed too many opportunities in your life. It's time to think about it. Your self-centeredness has destroyed too many open doors. Your hatred and resentment is a strong your affinity for immorality has wrecked more havoc in your life than you can imagine. But tonight, before we talk about demons, are you prepared? My job tonight is to bring you to a point where you see the need to embrace a new ideology. A little boy born in the States called Gray Farah is now a motivational speaker, multi-millionaire. At a very young age, was born by an African American, could not amount to anything. The family was poor, the gentleman was poor, but he made a decision to break status quo. And he started painting stones. Very tender age, he started painting stones and giving people to cover, to put on their books. And people were laughing at him. He went from door to door because he knew that he had a prophetic destiny to bring his family out of the financial misery. Hallelujah. Eventually, at age 12, that young boy became a multi-millionaire. At age 14, he was sitting on the board of over 10 companies. At age 20, he was given two honorary PhDs. He's 29 right now. And he's one of the most influential black millionaires in America. Men who decided to cooperate with destiny. Listen. No matter what is happening in your life, you are not the first to go through it. You can't sit down and keep regretting. Forget about what has happened. The Bible says this one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind. I press. Some of us have meditated too much about yesterday. God gave you the gift of today and tomorrow to remedy the mistakes of yesterday. Every time you wake up to a new day, it's God's gift to you that there is still hope for your life. We used to sing a song. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you. Lord, thank you, Lord. Whenever I see another breaking of day, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The relationship failed since last year, but till now, you have not moved forward. You've used one year to regret. Whereas you would have gotten married, you would have even been pregnant now. One year to regret. And the person that messed up your life has settled down. He's even born again now. Maybe he's a pastor. And you are there dying.
listen, two wrongs don't make a right. It doesn't matter what has happened. Retrace your steps now. Some of you played around with certain opportunities that God gave you. Accept tonight that it was because there was a mindset. Allow the Lord to adjust it and be ready to move forward. The Lord is going to be doing great things next week. But it's not enough. There are many of us. We've been coming for miracle service after miracle service. But every time the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon your life, there is a stronghold that frustrates his activity in your life. So it looks like your situation is so difficult, God cannot break through. It's not true. We have three prayer points tonight. The first prayer point is, is a cry before God. Truly, I trust that God will grant us grace to admit tonight and take responsibility for the way our lives have been. For those of us who are experts at blaming people, forget about it. Take responsibility. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me. Come on, join us if you can sing. To the place of destiny. He leads me and to the city up above He leads me and, and guides me To my place Hallelujah. of destiny This song is a prophetic song Listen, as you raise this song I'd like you to wave goodbye to the past We are going to start by dealing with the past I don't care what went right or wrong 2013, 2000 and whatever is gone as you raise this song, I'd like you to announce to your destiny that you are still coming. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song and I'd like you to sing it from the depths of your heart that he's leading you. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. failures of yesterday goodbye to the failures of yesterday this one thing I do forgetting the past forgetting the past forgetting the past forgetting the past I said to us I press towards the past forget about the past sing it as a prophecy over your life he leads me he leads me to the city of above, he leads me and guides me. Just the voices, my place sing it as a prophecy. He leads me and guides me to the city of above, he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Listen. There was a man in the Bible called Saul of Tarsus. The Bible tells us that that guy had a mindset based on his ideology. He thought killing believers was a way to please God. But on his way to Damascus, he encountered a light. When he encountered the light, something happened to him. He did not sit down regretting and crying. He turned and he knew that he had a great destiny. When Stephen was being martyred, Paul, Saul then, was seated and they placed their garments close to him. There was an idol worshiper called Abraham. Hallelujah. And he belonged to a land called Or of the Chaldeans. He was an idol worshiper. His father had taught him idol worship. Listen, listen to me. Do you realize that Abraham 
was not supposed to be the father of faith. That prophetic destiny belonged to his father. Read your Bible. His father failed and he refused to align himself. And God called Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, the first person God called was his father. And then God called him and said, Abraham, he said, come out. That's our first prayer point. Come out of your father's house. Come out of every failure. Come out of every regret. You will never be able to open up yourself for new things when you're still sitting to regret the past. Now I'd like you to lift your voice and I'd like you to prophesy and say the past is gone. The past is gone. The past is gone. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead, pray. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. Forgetting the things that are behind. Forgetting the failures that are behind. Please pray. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. To the city of above, He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Hallelujah. Please look up. The Bible says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. The next prayer point is a prayer point of sincere humility and brokenness. To say, Lord, I take responsibility. Something about my mindset authorized the devil into my life. And I take responsibility and I ask for mercy tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Cry out for mercy. There's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Go ahead and pray. Please pray inside and outside. This is for your destiny. Pray. Pray. I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Lord, I ask for mercy. There is a mindset my family has that has authorized witchcraft that has authorized limitations there is a mindset I have that has made me a recurrent failure tonight I take responsibility Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live to praise your name. 
You can't keep being afraid of your destiny. There is a certainty. There is an assurance. beginning be small but your latter end shall be great prophesy going to pray. Listen. Hold on. The next prayer point is going to be very strategic because some of you will be delivered here right now. Hallelujah. You're going to command every devil and every spirit that has had access to leech onto your mindset and authorize hell. You're going to pray and say in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus I command your hold over my mind to be lifted. Lift up your voice and pray. Come on, pray Koinonia. Strongholds. We command spirits. We command forces. Demon spirits, demon spirits that are being responsible, demon spirits that are being responsible for thought patterns, demon spirits that are being responsible for thought patterns. Pray. He must let you go tonight. Come on, pray. I no longer need you in my life. Spirit responsible for crystallizing mindset and thought patterns. They made my family poor. They made failures out of my family. No way. I arise to change. I arise to change things. Lift up your hands as I challenge those devils of darkness they must let you go there are spirits that have held on I tell you I see a lot of it as I stand on stage here but they must go right now the time is up it's a new season in the name of the Lord Jesus whose I am and whom I serve I decree and I declare that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been a victim of demonic forces, spells, yokes that have crystallized thought patterns that authorize Satan in your life in the name of Jesus and at the count of three let the fire man take it up let the fire of the Holy Ghost visit such a one and that those spirits must go I invoke it in the realm of the spirit right now at the count of three I like you to shout that name that is above all names listen listen 
I'm already seeing in the spirit there will be dramatic deliverances right now. Dramatic. Some of you, you will feel fire from your hands and your head. Fire. Literally. Literally. It must give way right now. Are you ready now? At the count of three, I invoke the powers of the heavens. And I decree and I declare that every spirit that is responsible for wrong thought patterns, at the count of three, may it live your life now. Are you ready? One, two, three. I command those devils out, out, out. I command foul spirits. Sekete kotopa, sokototes. Inside and outside, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let no spirit stand this fire. Let no devil stand this fire. Let no enchantment. I provoke that in the name of Jesus, every enchantment, every mystery that is responsible for casting spells, invocations over your mind to trap you in the name of Jesus let the fire of God land upon your destiny hallelujah lift your hands one more time there is no hiding I like you to lay your hands on your head that's the instruction the Lord gives me I tell you something will happen to some of you right now that will surprise you in the name of the Lord Jesus let those hands on your head become hands of fire and I declare that every power every power that is resting upon your mind and destiny as you shout that name Jesus let that fire bring freedom to you right now are you ready? One, two, three. Shekete I break courses. I break courses. I break courses. I break chinses. I command spells. Hallelujah lift your hands lift your hands every altar I don't care where it is whether in your village wherever that is servicing any enchantment any altar makoto parate dekete prokota that has taken any sacrifice that puts you in bondage right now at the count of three I command those altars to burn into pieces and that you be released one two three be free now I command those altars they burn with fire they burn with fire Oh, you must be free tonight. You must be free. It's time to rise to a new season. Hallelujah. Strongholds that keep mighty men to remain weak in life strongholds you would have gone to school for years but it made sure you never pass jam it works for everybody until it comes to your turn then you make a foolish decision you don't even know why you said what you said and it closes the door to you Hallelujah. 
are going to sing this song. I see a river flowing in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit. Fresh water. And I believe that this is bringing freshness to many people. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. Give it your best. As we sing that song, prophesy it as your song of Exodus. Out of certain nonsense. He said, My head shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. He said, And I shall be anointed. Let me tell you something. If you are not tired of failure in your life, you can go. But for as many who are saying, Lord, this is it. I am sick and tired. This year must not finish with my life like this. I'd like you to sing this song from the depths of your heart. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. Your prophecy tonight is that you, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. You're my glory. showing me something. I'm seeing a mask. A mask like the face of, of an idol or something. And there is a particular family I'm seeing that worships that thing. It's, it's, it's currently in your house. I don't know if it's in the village or somewhere, but I'm seeing a mask. A mask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whichever family this word is for, I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. I command that power to lose its hold over your life now. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to minister to a lady. We still have miracle service, but... Um, men die in your family. In fact, right now there are only about one or two that are left from what the Lord is showing me. Men, whether they get married or whatever, they just die mysteriously. Please, who is that? I'm just led to pray for the person. My glory lift her up on my head. My glory. Hold your hands, both of you. Okay, you're part of it. Come, hold your hands. Please, make sure you understand the word. Don't just be emotional about it. I see mysterious death. Men, not women. Men, men, men. Hallelujah. Look at me. 
The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, that he may annihilate the works of darkness. For this purpose, I'm going to pray for you. You are representing your families, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And that curse must be broken. It must be broken. For many of you, they are covenants, ordinances of darkness. It's time for your destiny to go. Lift those hands. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your fire. Let fire fall, not just upon them, but upon the foundations of those families. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as I lay my hands upon you, I command that those things are broken, 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 broken in the name of Jesus, 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 broken, the cause, out, out of her. I command, I see a spirit, I see a man wearing a red skirt. I'm seeing a man wearing a red skirt. In the name of Jesus, release her destiny now. Now, 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 now. Broken, broken, broken. I cause altars. There is a cause in this family. There is a cause in our family. I set fire upon those altars of darkness. I release everyone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Those altars in Cameroon. I command fire upon those altars of witchcraft that ties your success and your progress. Oh, let her come. Have I prayed for her? I pray for you. Hallelujah. I prophesy to you that this evil ends. This plague of death ends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It ends in the name of Jesus Christ. You are soon rounding up. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Go back to your seat. I would have done this next week. But the Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing a number of people I see plots of darkness over your exams. Some of you, it has started happening to you. And there are things we must settle right now for you to write a meaningful exam. Some of you are getting into malpractice because of this pressure. Lift your hands. You study and you don't understand. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to start speaking not everybody but there are specific people that the hand of God will locate them I see academic chains chains you are not dull 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 lift your hands father in the name I see fire bursting Busting across the congregation. Everyone under any academic spell, help them please. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the count of three, as you shout that name, Jesus, you will feel fire. It will be on your hands. Hands, 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 hands. One, two, three. Release them. Release them now. Release them now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting.
My sister, come. You on black. Two of you. Come. The one on white and the one on black. Two of you, come. Your time of visitation has come. Come. Shibra Kete Baladabash. Are you friends or sisters or something? You are sisters. Because I saw the same thing happening to you, happening to her. There is witchcraft in your family. And if that thing is not broken, who is married among you? You are married. Where's your husband, madam? He's at home. I need to pray for you. Hi, this, this is evil. Ah! If I don't pray for you, well, it's not it's a personal thing, but I need to pray for you so that you will not start having problems in your home. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? I must pray for you. Number two, God wants to bring prosperity to your family. Huh? Look at me. This is the biggest desire of you and your husband. Is that true? As you are standing like this, you are, you are suffering. Things are not even working well because there is witchcraft. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My sister, look at me. There are four major things that are going to happen to your life between now and December. After I pray for you, I'm not going to say them now. But God will surprise you, He's going to shock you. Because you are a nice person. But you see, what is stopping your progress in life is witchcraft. I don't know if before now you believe that witchcraft exists or not. But if you don't, please believe it. Because you will see what will happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I curse the power of witchcraft. I stretch my hands over you and I command it to leave you now. I see something like a crown on your head. And I command that spirit to leave you. It goes never to return to you. And Father, these four things you have revealed may they happen. And let her see it. Madam... Look at me. Go and tell your husband. November 17th. November 17th is a day of mighty breakthrough for the family. Mighty breakthrough for the family. God bless you. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Hallelujah. Please just give me one or two minutes and then we'll round up. But let me just minister to one person. I'm seeing someone from your 200 level, they have never brought out your complete results till now. Please, who is that person? Either one will be missing or something. This is the sign the Lord is giving me. You, come. You are not the only one. I'm seeing a lady too. Please don't just come out and be emotional about it. Who are you? You're wearing blue or something like that. Hold your hands. Ken, there is witchcraft in your family. And because of the greatness, the greatness that is upon you, you are going to become such a mighty man and a great man. But I see this thing haunting you, haunting you in a very serious way. I see that there is, there is a mantle of wealth and greatness upon your life. But then I've seen this thing happen because I'm seeing that this thing wants to frustrate your academics. Your scripts mysteriously missing. Who is he that speaks a thing and it will come to pass when the Lord has not declared it? I put the word of God upon your life and I declare right now every missing script i don't care where it is i command that the angels of god may they go to the senate may they go to your faculty and bring out your script right now as i speak to you i release their ministry right now i release their ministry right now i pray for two of you look at me the two ladies look at me look at me I'm going to pray for you. 
there's delay serious delay in your family very very serious delay and I'm going to pray all of you have great destinies and the Lord wants to lift you father I pray and I cause witchcraft in the name of Jesus that everything that represents witchcraft I cause it let your scripts be released let your scripts be released right now in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare it I decree it let it be established in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah lift your hands and give Jesus thanks hallelujah the Lord wants me to pray over that family. Is there anyone like that? Please quickly come. Your name? Your son name? Your son name too? Do you have an elder sister? Where is she? What's she doing? She's preparing to get married. I see serious trouble coming if we do not pray. Are you getting my point? I'm going to pray. There's serious trouble if we do not pray. I need to pray for your family because it's not like there was witchcraft in your family. There is still witchcraft. And the leaders in your family are the ones engaging in this directly. And this is affecting you people. It's bringing delay. One. Two. is bringing lack of sustained spiritual growth in your life. And for your sister, I see this thing affecting her even in the area of our marital life. We have to destroy it right now. Father, I cause, because I'm seeing an animal. I'm seeing an animal that was given for sacrifice. I'm seeing an animal. And it was done for this lady. In the name of Jesus, I cause that thing right now. I command it to leave you. Mando Pratisha. That's why you feel in the night when you sleep like something is choking you. And I need to pray for you. You're very intelligent, but things are tied down in your life. Two of you hold your hands and lift it. Let me just. Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I cause witchcraft. Right now, every sacrifice that has been done, I declare it null and void. Null and void. I release both of you right now. Everything that is tied, your health, your health, your health, your health, your health. The Lord is releasing your health right now. Your health. I release your health. Sister, let's pray. Now, I know that they've already gone far in the wedding and their information I will not say here. But please pray for the man your sister is going to marry. Do you know him? Do you like him? You don't like him? I won't say more than that. Just pray. Are you getting my point? Because seen serious trouble trouble of of slap and beat and kick I'm not a prophet of doom are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let your sister not think that I'm prophesying 
I know that they've already gone find the marriage. May God give you more understanding. But I'm just telling you what me have seen. There is big disaster. Not everything that glitters is gold. But you have been knowing this in your spirit. Is you have you have known that something is wrong somewhere. We pray for the mercy of God. And I'm praying for you too. The Lord is releasing favor upon your life right now. Favor. 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 Hallelujah. We're out of time. Please rise up on your feet. We'll continue next week during our miracle service. Next week is our miracle service for the month of October. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please invite your families. Don't come alone. Our venue is at CGC. It's going to be a mighty, mighty time. I'm glad to announce to you my mother is going to be around live and direct. Hallelujah. My mother is coming for the miracle service. She'll have the opportunity to speak over the lives of so many people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to take the altar call now. No closing your eyes. Open your eyes. There are people in this place right now. Some of you inside, some of you outside. You have never truly made a decision for Jesus Christ. You love the things of God. You love church. But you've never really come to acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. And then there are others you have seemingly given your hearts to the Lord. But you have found yourself derailing. I want to reconnect you and lead you back to the lover of your soul and to the savior of your life. I'm just going to count one to five. The whole idea of breaking free and subduing strongholds starts when your passion for God is reignited. And you're here, you need that reconnection. Please, I'm going to count one to five. Wherever you are, inside or outside, I'd like you to boldly come out here. I'd like to pray with you. Father, thank you. One, please appreciate them. Two, there are people here who need to come out. Don't sit back. Don't wait for anyone. You are the first person to come out. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Three. There's nothing to be ashamed about. You don't get shy when you're given an award or a prize or a gift. Four. You say, man of God, it's over with the devil. I'm making up my mind right now. That I'm for Jesus, for Jesus ever. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate your sincerity. God bless you. Keep coming. I'd like to lead you in this prayer that will change your life dramatically. Lift up your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I acknowledge that I cannot help myself. I ask for your mercy. I ask for your grace. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that Jesus died for me. And I accept your lordship over my life. From today, I declare that I have eternal life in my spirit. Satan is far from my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus. Keep the hands lifted. Father, thank you for accepting this once. I pray that you make mighty men and women out of them. Make kingdom ambassadors out of their lives. In the name of Jesus. May you be great. May you be mighty. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and may he use you mightily. No going back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for making this bold decision. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. Just take this way. And then they'll have your details. And you'll be back. God bless you. Please remain standing. This is your first time of worshiping with us here at Koinonia. I'd like you to gloriously leave your seat and come out here. We have a blessing for you inside and outside. Please, very quickly, we're out of time. Leave your seat and boldly come out. God bless you.
God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, ma. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, Koinonia. This is not your best. Appreciate them. Make them feel loved and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. The Lord brought you here to bless you. He brought you here to transform your life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much for making our time to worship with us. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. Hallelujah. I guarantee you that your life will never be the same. Something will happen in your life that will transform you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.